What goes into launching a new Shopify store when you've had three years to deal with the supply chain crisis, a new product, a new brand, and your first month out, you hit $20,000 in sales. That's exactly what we're getting into with this interview with Susie Weeks of MoviFamily.com. We've been working with Susie on and off for the past three years while she's brought a baby product to market. And I'll actually get, let her get into that because there's so many nuances when bringing a product like that, that's so specific to a certain stage of life like that and keeping momentum going and building a brand and dealing with the frustrations that come with thinking that you're going to launch in six months, but actually have that timeline completely ripped away from you and still keep positive and keep that momentum going over a three year journey to finally launch the product. So these are just some of the things we're getting into today. So if you are a aspiring Shopify store owner, or you're one that's in market and you're looking for a good story or some inspiration that you can apply to your own brand launch or to help ramp things up, then you should absolutely listen to this conversation. So Susie, I am so excited to have you here today. I'm so thrilled to be here. So fun. I know. So let's give some context. Um, what is Movi Family, number one? And then how, like, what inspired you to launch your own baby products brand? Yeah. Well, Movi Family is a premium baby brand. And like you said, we started about three years ago and I'm a mom of two uh, small children. And so I went through the whole baby stage of diapers and baby registries. And I, um, I wanted actually a way to create some passive income for my family. I knew that I wanted to create another revenue stream uh, for our growing family. And I was interested in the baby industry simply because I had some experience in it. And yeah. it's just such a fun process of creating a registry and choosing products and comparing different brands. And I found that there was a gap in the diaper changing pads that were on the market. Mm -hmm. um, I found that I couldn't find a diaper changing pad that really felt like aesthetically beautiful in my nursery and the colors that I wanted that had both really great design, but also great function. Um, so about three years ago, I was introduced to an e-commerce tool called Helium 10. Maybe some of you know it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a powerful tool for Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers. But this tool, when I learned how to use it, I was able to kind of confirm my suspicions of, hey, there's a gap in the market. There's a high demand, a high search volume for this product without the supply to match it. And I think that's where there's an opportunity for product innovation. So that's kind of how Movi Family started was um, this desire to create a premium diaper changing pad that blew the competitive. Yeah. So usually what first time sellers do is they take a tool like Helium 10, they identify a gap in the market, understand, uh, you know, for you, that was a premium diaper changing pad. And at this point you have two options. You can either white label something that's already available at a factory and kind of slap your own brand on it, maybe slightly modify it, or you can completely custom design your own and build a brand launching off of Shopify as opposed to Amazon. Why did you choose the harder approach of building a brand versus just selling another white label product on Amazon? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I knew that I wanted a premium brand and a premium brand that was innovative in that space and that we could really have our own stamp on it. And so for me, that was creating our own design. Um, it wasn't like a white label option. So yeah, we went down the route of hiring a designer, a top notch designer, um, going through the CPSC testing and compliance. It's kind of a hard category to get into because of the compliance testing. Um, but I think the returns, when you have a premium product like that, the return potential is so big. So, yeah. And what? how did you kind of inform the design choices you made on how you designed the product? Yeah, that's a great question. We I worked collabor collaboratively with a designer and we looked at all the product reviews, negative product reviews of all our competitors. We just read hundreds and hundreds of them. What were customers complaining about? Where did we see gaps in the market where we could do something better? Whether, even if it's as small as like a quality control improvement or, hey, the buckle on this strap is, not, is scratchy or something, some area of improvement. So we researched that. Um, and then we also, you know, just went into that creative mode of how do we want it to feel? How do we want parents to feel? How do we want this product to feel in line with our brand kind of story? 
Um, so we came up with a design called the Movi Cocoon. And this, we're so excited about the design because it literally cocoons a baby and hugs a baby um, in the diaper changing pad. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just really thrilled that it's innovative in both function and design. I, I love that. So one of the biggest hurdles we had, um, I remember we started working together originally and we were like, yeah, six months, we should be in market. And I think that was 2020. <laughs> uh, we all know how that turned yeah. out. Um, but right away you went to audience building yeah. through the pandemic. You essentially had three years of like figuring out the design, yeah. figuring out how to get to manufacturing, but also, you know, from working with us that you needed to build your audience. So mm -hmm. how active were you in building your audience during that three year period? Yeah. Well, we did kind of two rounds of marketing. We started with you guys doing a marketing test where we took digital renderings of our product. We didn't have even a sample or a prototype yet, but we created digital renderings and we did a market test and we did some list building there. And so even with digital renderings, our list building was pretty successful, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, yeah. And so we had a little bit of a base. And then kind of after we had some good photography, then we started launching our social media and we went hard on social media, um, specifically Instagram, because that's kind of where our audience yeah, is. Market. Um, and, you know, long before we had a photo shoot, long before we were just kind of honing our brand message and trying to connect to the hearts of moms and dads, which was our avatar. Um, and we, that proved successful. We now have a kind of a strong base that we can, we can build off of. Yeah. And what's really interesting is like, I don't come from a branding background for me. I think that my, um, my background is launch it and use data to figure out how to improve, which mm -hmm. is, I think why my partner, Dan, being the design branding guy is like such a good compliment. Good team. Um, there, yeah. Like there's really two ways to approach a new brand. You can invest the time and energy in the branding now when you launch, which is getting really clear on your values, your look, your, your feel, who your customer is really getting narrowing down on that base. And the other side is like the brand evolves over time. You start to invest or reinvest revenue, et cetera, et cetera. So why did you decide to focus on branding from day one, as opposed to just kind of waiting for it, you know? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think partially for me, that's my strength is, is the brand building. I enjoy yeah. telling the story. I enjoy creating an experience for people. Like that was kind of my natural strength. Yeah. But I also knew to sell a premium product, you have to have a strong brand. And I knew I was going up against big established baby brands who had 10, 12 years of experience and a big, you know, just a bigger brand presence. And so yeah. I knew to sell something that was at the top in terms of price point, I had to kind of back it up with that price experience. So for me, it was like, I want to create something excellent and it has to be excellent from the start. So that's why I invested that money in the branding. Oh, that's such a good point. Because I remember when we were doing the test and even like, you know, the average product in your space is like 30, 40 bucks for a really cheap knockoff, right? But then you have the Movi Cocoon, which retails for $129, $150-ish. Yeah. So it is the most expensive, if not top two most expensive in the category. And some people would say like, that can't be done, or there's no way someone's going to pay five times the price when they can literally get the cheap version on Amazon. Right. But the difference in that comes down to perception of quality, perception of excellence, a feeling right. that you have created through yeah. a strong brand. Yeah. And I think branding creates trust. I think especially in the baby industry, you think about a new parent who's researching all these products, they're spending time reading reviews because they want to have the best for their child. That's where branding creates trust and that trust is so important to that purchasing decision. Yeah, so, so true. So when it comes to um, the last few months, like where we're at with Movi as a recording in April, 2023 is we've launched a pre-order campaign. We're about eight weeks away from fulfilling. Yeah. Um, but getting ready to do that market launch, we did that launch when we were pretty set on production timelines and we're like, all right, now let's, let's start taking, you know, transactions, et cetera. Yeah. Um, 
did you have any misconceptions or like fears or doubts about taking pre-orders for a product? Oh, that's, hmm, did I have any doubts or fears? I wasn't sure if people would put money down for a product that is going to ship in two months. Yeah, I think I had never done that before. And it was so surprising to me when I woke up, I woke up that first morning that we had launched pre-orders and I woke up to like, 10 orders on my phone and it was so fun um, yeah. and surprising. But I think, um, yeah, creating the roadmap for pre-orders was like nurturing the audience, bringing them along, doing a countdown, really like bringing people into the story. Um, and then you have a roadmap where people are, uh, you know, calling in, waiting, they're inquiring, like you have kind of laid the bait for them to be yeah. in this pre-order journey. So I was, I was skeptical about it, but it actually has proved to be really successful. And why do you think people like your customers were comfortable pre-ordering? Um, I think partially because we had a strong brand um, presence. Like we had that, we had communicated really well through our email list. Mm -hmm. um, we have guaranteed uh, like our, our return policy is very transparent our customer service um, is very, you know, we have a 24 hour turnaround on all customer service yeah. um, emails and inquiries. So I think all those things go into establishing trust and we have done our due diligence in terms of like CPSC testing and all the things that kind of parents are concerned about. We've made sure that our marketing claims are absolutely backed up. So. Right. And um, one thing I think that's really difficult for entrepreneurs to go through is if they start taking pre-orders and then have to announce a delay. Right. This happens all, all the time, time on Kickstarter space. Yeah. And most brands screw it up. And really? I absolutely love how you dealt with even announcing, I think it was like a, a six week delay on this. Right. Can you walk me through going that process through that process after you've taken like, you know, 18 K of pre-orders at this point yeah. <laughs> and you had to announce, I'm so sorry for your baby. It's going to be another six weeks. Yeah. Like, yeah. What was that like? It was, I mean, for me personally, it was so disappointing because we built all this momentum and we were excited. We had great sales. And then to have to announce the six week shipping delay, it feels like such a bummer for, for everybody. And I think the challenge with our product is that most people buy it when they're pregnant and they're time, it's a very time sensitive product, right? With pregnancy, um, yeah. they absolutely need it for that baby who's coming. So um, we sent out an email um, with very clear, um, very clear shipping dates, very clear um, explanation of what was going on. Yeah. And we just, you know, presented the information, but then assured our customers, Hey, like, we believe this is a product that's worth waiting for. You're not going to be disappointed. And just kind of creating that, like, almost affirmation sandwich of, you know, some good news tucked in, you know, the good news is surrounding the bad news, I guess. Um, and our, honestly, the responses that we got from our customers were, were generally really positive. Like, yeah. people wrote in and said, we're so excited about your brand. We're, we're bummed. You know, some people did have to, there were a bunch of cancellations and refunds as we expected yeah. just because that's part of the journey with a time sensitive product. Yeah. Um, but in general, people were disappointed to cancel and they wrote in and shared and it was kind of like we were building connections with our customers. So that was um, still a great learning experience for us. Yeah. And then um, you did something really good, which is you didn't just convey. A lot of people have this, fear of announcing a delay because they think everyone's going to cancel. And no, we only had like a small portion of people cancel, but they're like entrepreneurs are so scared to share bad news because they don't know how to properly share bad news. Mm -hmm. And what you were saying with like an affirmation sandwich for like, Hey, here's the reality of what's happening. Here's what we're doing about it. But here's why you should be really excited. Like by yeah. sharing like an update or a right. color or like whatever that is. So whenever you are sharing bad news, having that, I like that you have that affirmation sandwich where it's like right. share the good with the bad and it makes the delivery of the update that much better. Exactly. Yeah. So. And I think believe that this is still going to work out. You know, this is like resistance and road bumps in the journey are just normal, but you, your eyes are on the prize. Like you're on the long journey for, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, Another topic that comes up a lot with delays or with entrepreneurs that just have like a huge timeline before they can take orders or deliver product is like, 
how do you keep that momentum going? And I would love to know, like, what are some of the things that you are doing to help kind of keep that momentum going while we're in this period? That's a great question. Um, I am currently trying to trying to figure that out. Like, how do we keep yeah. momentum even though we're two months away from shipping currently? And I think it's just keep providing great value to your audience. Keep providing value, even if it's not directly product related, like get on your Instagram page, do an Instagram live, connect to the topics that connect to your customer. You know, even if it's humor or inspiring quotes or, um, you know, just product updates, but you're, you keep providing value, you know, and that like 80% of your content should just be providing content providing great value to your audience and 20% can be those product updates or, you know, selling your actual product. So, you know, we still have a lot of work that we can do on social media Mm -hmm. uh, in these next two months. But you bring up a really great point in that staying top of mind and being consistent in the value you create, um, because there are different levels of people. There are those that have already pre-ordered and they're ready and they like to see you in business, right? But then there's the other subset of people who are like, I'm not ready to pre-order yet, but I am planning on pre-ordering this on my next paycheck or when they're shipping or whatever. And so if you just disappear because you think you're going to lose all momentum, you're definitely going to lose momentum. So you have to stay top of mind because you're going to have that set of people that come in and and order eventually. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's people that are following your journey and you don't realize it. Um, and they're just not ready to purchase yet. So, yeah. There's been some really cool, um, like, um, whatever things that have happened because of the pre-order campaign. Like, haven't you had like a ton of brands or influencers reach out to want to do collaborations? Yeah. It's been amazing because I knew that influencers would be part of our kind of marketing strategy. I didn't know how I'd never worked with influencers before. And during the pre-order campaign, we had probably 20 to 30 influencers reach out to us asking for product. And um, that was just a really neat experience where we're like, oh, we have too many people to work with. We actually have to create some sort of roadmap for how we work with people. So yeah, yeah, it's been fun. Which now that's actually something that you can and, you know, are doing with Movi for, um, building up that list of influencer shipping lists so that when we have product, we can continue like that mass outreach to get product to influencers and start to do more joint ventures that way. Yeah, exactly. So, um, exactly. What's really fascinating, this just came top of mind here, but um, one of the benefits of going and doing a Kickstarter campaign is that it's so public. And because it's so public, you get a bunch of opportunities come your way, mm-hmm. um, like influencers, press, et cetera. But you've actually been getting that same kind of traction by launching privately on your own website. Mm -hmm. So that's super cool. Um, At any point, did you want to go to Kickstarter? Like, were you ever torn between like where to launch your product? Yeah, well, originally, I think that's how I actually found you, Kirsten, was we were originally thinking about Kickstarter. And that's, you know, traditionally been a good place to launch a product. And I think as we did more research on just where do new moms shop, new moms are not shopping on Kickstarter because there's too much uncertainty and Kickstarter seems to do a little bit better in the tech space, um, like new technology. Um, But we knew like new moms are shopping on Instagram. That's where they're getting, you know, they're making a lot of consumer choices. So we, we began with the strategy of Kickstarter and then we realized, Hey, we just want to be on Shopify Um, My husband and I have an e-commerce background um, in a different industry on Shopify. So we were familiar with that um, and yeah, knew that, Hey, let's try, let's try Shopify with um, social media ads as our launch strategy with the goal to perhaps move to Amazon after that. Yeah. What is your goal with getting on Amazon? Is it like a this year thing or? Yeah, I think um, to get on Amazon, you have to really hone your supply chain. And you have to be really confident of your supply chain process. So because we're just brand new, we're in our first inventory order right now, we have a little bit of work to do to hone our supply chain and just make sure that it's really streamlined. Um, Because if you go out of stock on Amazon, it's kind of like you have to start your whole marketing process all over again with the algorithm. So um, that's why we're launching first on Shopify, kind of getting a few orders under our belt. And then hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be on Amazon. Yeah, that makes sense. So what's 
one piece of advice you'd give to someone who's just starting their journey right now? Yeah, I would say if you're in product development and you're launching a product, I would say do your due diligence and make sure you're doing research in terms of um, the compliance. You know, does your product have any compliance requirements for CPSC? Um, protect your intellectual property. Make sure you're doing your due diligence of, um, you know, protecting your trademarks or patents and things like that. That takes time. And so yeah. think about it from the beginning. Um, it's kind of like you're building a city, but you need the fortress around it to like protect it. Yes. You know, make sure you have the right insurances, like build that, build that foundation. Um, and then I would say like, just think about this journey um, in the long haul. Like if you're creating something that's excellent, that's going to last for years, um, you're not in it. You're not in it like to get rich in the next two years. Like think about it as in a like five to 10 year kind of plan. Um you yeah. know, and hopefully all entrepreneurs want the payout earlier than that, but just think about your business in a five to 10 year timeline. Um, and then just know that like resistance and um, trials are part of the entrepreneur journey. Like I think entrepreneurs are known to learn how to pivot, learn how to be creative in the midst of challenges and work around that. And you're going to develop that muscle in the journey. So it's not fun, but it's a reality. <laughs> Professional problem solving, right? Like that's exactly that's what problem we're solving. Bred to do, not bred to do. It's what we're like. We just have to evolve to do that, or exactly. we should just go get a job. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So awesome. Well, outside of that, if there are any new moms or a partner that's looking for a gift idea, where can yeah. they learn a bit more about Moby? Yeah. Yeah. Movi makes a great um, gift idea for a pregnant mom or a mom of a kid in diapers. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Movi family. That's M O V I family. Um, or our Shopify website is www.movifamily.com. And you can pre-order the Movi cocoon. Now we are shipping the first week of July. So that's a great way to find us. Amazing. All links will be below if you are watching on YouTube or in the show notes on the podcast. Um, but outside of that, Susie, this has been amazing. So thank you for taking time out of your so day to come. On. Thanks so much, Kirsten. All right, guys, if you are looking for help either validating a new product like we did with Movi Family, you see how having a positive success can really help you hone in on who your customer avatar is. Or if you're looking for help with your Shopify product launch, check out some of the resources we have below. Outside of that, we'll see you next time.